All right, y'all, so we're gonna continue breaking down what's being said, because I don't want you all to miss anything. It's a lot of value being given in this video because he's actually taken analytical YouTubers who's grown on the platform through trial and error, reading the data, reading the analytics. It's a completely different type of YouTuber from a content creator like Kai or Aisho Speed or Aiden Ross or, or things like that. And there is a difference in the separation and the knowledge of how to grow on YouTube. It's people who can not use their personality, not use themselves, and just literally grow channels back to back to back on a Mr. Beast type level. And then it's people who are, they are the, they are the attraction. So anytime they pop up, views is gonna pop up following them. It's, it's not the same skill, it's a completely different thing. And most people, anyone can be a Mr. Beast. Anyone can be a content creator like this. Anyone can use the skills that I teach you and things like that, but not just anyone can be Kai Sinat or KSI or any of those guys. So that being said, let's jump into it. Let's keep let's keep dissecting this advice so you, you all don't miss anything key that's being said here. By the way, as always, courses and in, in, in um, description and coaching, all that. But yeah, let's get it. I met another super smart creator. Despite having a smaller channel than some of the other people we talked to, he gave some pretty amazing advice for small creators because he was there himself not long ago. What would be your advice for someone who's just starting from scratch, trying to reach their first thousand subscribers? I would say the best advice that I could give is to not look for some kind of secret and instead just make a list of all of the skills that you need to get down and then just master those skills with whatever time that you have and build the foundation of YouTube and understanding the game of YouTube. And then from then, it's all about just posting as much content as you possibly can while putting in as much effort as you possibly can and following the patterns, doing what works well and not doing what doesn't work. What are those skills for you? Sharing personal stories with lessons at the end of them. It's things like speaking and being able to articulate my ideas and thoughts well. And it's also just the basic YouTube skills like titles, thumbnails, intros, hooks, and also just learning. So you can tell he's still learning. This is this is like the type of information that certain content creators is getting praised for giving out out here. And to be fair, he's not saying anything that's necessarily wrong, but this isn't really going to help you grow. It's just post, keep posting, you know, learn titles, thumbnails, the basics. And it's like, it's it's just, it's regular information that you can find anywhere. But he, he does only have, what, 8,000 subscribers. So, I mean, it's, it's to be expected. But this is like, I think this is so general and basic that yes, it's not it's not enough. He's and, but he's still learning how exactly he grew. So it's it is amazing to see the difference in the responses of people who have gotten 14 million subscribers and things like that. And then you hear like someone who's just now starting to crack the code and figure it out. But once as he as he grows and figures out more, watch he's gonna he's gonna know a lot more learning how to do scripting and getting those things down too. Do you have any like quick tips on the best ways to nail those four things you just mentioned? Reading as many books as you possibly can, watching a lot of videos on it, and then just writing down the specific steps that you can implement. Not just taking notes on general things, otherwise you're gonna like clutter your mind and then you're just gonna get lost in all of these different pieces of information. So instead just taking notes of the things that you're going to implement. I would say personally, the, from my experience, um, the fastest way is coaching. And I know that it's like, oh, but if we get your coaching, it benefits you. I have the mindset of coaching because I, I'm in the finance niche. I, I do investing. That's what I do. And I understand that when I'm talking to somebody who's made a million dollars, who's made a billion dollars or something like that, it's like I need the information that they have and I need to get it as quickly as possible. I need to understand their pitfalls, all of this stuff. I need to get I need to get to the end goal as soon as possible. This person has been there, done that, experienced that, and they can tell me everything that they know right now. So why wouldn't I want to have access to them as a mentor and to be able to talk to them and communicate with them? It's like, and then if it's affordable, if it's something that I can buy, like it's that's just the quickest way to get results. Like I don't, like we have limited time here. Like what what else? What else am I going to do with the money? If somebody's charging like a few hundred dollars, like bro, I, I if I would buy an iPhone, wouldn't I? So you mean to tell me I'm not going to put some money and get information that would change my life? Like it makes no sense. Like people would value an iPhone more than they value their own life. People would value a concert more than they value their own life. People would value like some shoes more than they value their own life. It makes no sense. You can have, you, you can, you can learn so much knowledge that you have infinite shoes. You have infinite money to buy infinite shoes and stuff, but instead you, you make the wrong decision. So that's why, that's why a lot of people swear by coaching because most of us were learning by mentors who without these mentors in our lives, we would it would have taken us years, many, many more years to accomplish the things that we have. So that that's why that's always my advice. Um, but yeah.
and then just implementing those things one by one. Really lock in on knowing who your dream viewer is, because if you don't know who your dream viewer is, you're not going to know what kind of ideas to come up with, titles Huge to advice. make, thumbnails or anything. So just know exactly who your dream viewer is, write down everything you possibly can about everything they do, and then just optimize for who that person is. Appreciate you, man. After chatting with Abe, I went back to the convention. And while waiting in line for a free circle water bottle, I struck up a conversation with the guy next to me. Turns out he was a full-time YouTuber who makes tens of thousands of dollars a month by growing YouTube channels from zero to a thousand subs and then selling them. I had to ask him for his secrets. And when he told me to focus on quote, good titles and thumbnails, I pushed a bit further. When you talk about like what titles work, what thumbnails work, etc., what are the specific things you're looking for? Because everyone's definition of a good title might be different. That's a, that's a business? <laughs> I, yo, I might have to, I might have to start teaching you how to do it. Y'all, hey. <clears throat> So he, he, I wonder what he charging for that from zero to a hundred of zero to a thousand. Bro, I'd be going from like zero to a to hundred K. Like how much can I charge? Like, but I don't know. People probably ain't gonna buy the channel. I, I gotta see like, bro, I got some channels. I got a lot of channels. That is subjective, but what's objective is the view count. Just because I don't think it's a good title, the market can have a completely different interpretation on that. And so if I see a certain buzzword in a complimentary niche video, I will test out that in my title. And I might not be attracted to it. But again, if I take myself out of the equation and I look at the objective number of views, I can say, well, it worked. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, man. Well, I really appreciate it. Thank you. After my chat with Nick, I bumped into an 18-year-old full-time YouTuber. And so I couldn't resist asking him for his YouTube. YouTube advice. At the beginning, especially if nobody knows you, the best way is to instantly provide value to people. I like to say a lot, like nobody cares about you, so make something that they do care about. Start How many times? All right, bro. All right. It's just it's getting it's getting out of hand at this point. It's just obvious. Like, but he, he he's raising some amazing points. Start off with something that's kind of trending already. If you get on something like Hold something on, that bro. they do, okay, it's an instantly. And people say, oh, why are you making videos about DoDash? Why this? Why that? And then they they get on these high horses talking about why you make videos referencing other people and things like that. Because no one gives a shit about you, especially when you turn when I like if I'm in my own niche where I'm the king of this niche. Like if I go on some of my channels and it's it's me. Oh, snap. Veil just posted. But. If I'm in, if I just moved into a whole new niche, nobody knows me, nobody cares about me, nobody understands my level of success and all of this stuff, is I know how to best get in front of those views. Like everybody's sitting here judging and saying stuff. You're seeing me. What I did worked, right? Like you're here to judge me. You, you, the fact that you're here to judge me means what I did is working. Can, can, I, you, can you not see that? Is that not registering? The reason that you're here to be able to criticize me is because I did something that worked. And nobody, nobody, that don't click in people's head because when you're here looking for a reason to be negative, you're not understanding this person I don't like just did something that got me on this video. Damn, maybe I can learn something from him. People don't see things that way. It's like, it's a lot of logic that get lost in this generation. It's crazy. But, hey. They provide value to people. I like to say a lot, like, nobody cares about you, so make something that they do care about. Start off with something that's kind of trending already. If you get on something, like, really, really early, then you already have, like, this huge advantage compared to a lot of other people that might get on it later. And then you get a lot of eyes on you. And if people really like you, then they'll stay for more. And they're like, wow, this guy's so underrated. A couple years ago, this game came out. And in the first, like, two days of it, I created a guide on how to win in this game. And it got 250,000 views. And I had 20,000 subscribers at the time. And that just shows how important it is to, like, really, really stay up to date with stuff, especially in your niche, even if you're, like, a small creator. One final piece of advice you'd like to leave people with? Don't overcomplicate it. Just start. Don't procrastinate. Action. 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 Keep posting. Get better every single time. All right, don't procrastinate. Action, action, action. Keep posting. And get better every single time. That was amazing advice right there. Very amazing advice, man. And and like I said, a lot of people are, are sleeping on just how strong some of this some of this advice is. Like I know that I criticize I criticize a lot, and I and I try to help out, but that's because it, it kind of pains me to see people struggling. Like I like to see people win. Like I want people to tell me, yo, you said this right here and it clicked for me and, and that just helped me get better. And it's like, if I can do that for people and help them along their journey be successful, I love that. So yeah, that being said, let me know what you all think. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications and I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out, fam.